you remember the true origin of the modern remake? The year is 1992. Gary Oldman storms off the set of Bram Stoker's Dracula because Ford Coppola is a frustrating buffoon. Jump ahead to the year 2002. The United States Congress authorizes the Iraq War. George Bush chokes on a pretzel. After recovering, he thinks to himself, Whoa, that was too close for comfort. I should really go play Spyro the Dragon. Spyro the Dragon hits store shelves and is an instant success. People everywhere love the little purple dragon and his silly gem-collecting adventures. In an unrelated note, Sam Raimi finishes principal editing on the first film of the Spider-Man trilogy. Flash forward to 2006. Scientists finalized the mapping of the human genome, and consequently were rewarded with The Legend of Spyro, A New Beginning. It takes place in a similar setting to the first Spyro, but certain things are changed. Some things look familiar, but others certainly not. Some characters are voiced by David Spade. Others are voiced by Gary Oldman. The tone is overall less fun and imaginative, favoring a more epic style of storytelling and gameplay. But one thing remains constant. There is a character called Spyro, and there are little gems to collect. The game is a moderate success. Spyro's nose collapses from snorting too much cocaine, and he undergoes facial reconstructive surgery. The game becomes a trilogy in order to support Spyro's drug habit. As a child, did you ever cover your hand in glue and wait for it to dry? Remember how satisfying it felt to peel off the glue in one full layer so you could pretend you were molting and frighten people? Sorry, sorry, uh, where was I? Hi, Spyro! Welcome to Glimmer! Unfortunately for us, a mob of lizards just showed up and started stealing all of our gems! Can you stop them? <laughs> 